Now, you've probably heard something from their new album, Unknown Pleasures, on The Feelers Show. And the reviews have been very, very complimentary. All of which goes to show that perhaps Tony Wilson's criticisms of the record industry are justified because Joy Division's album is on his factory label. When Richard Skinner met Stephen Morris and Ian Curtis from the band, he wondered whether they felt their isolation in Manchester was a help or a hindrance to their careers. In our terms, it has been quite a good thing because we haven't been influenced by what's been going on elsewhere, really. We were apart from everything and we sort of developed our own particular way in our own environment. Mm. At the time when we started in Manchester, there were only three or four other groups of the new wave type. Yet in London, there seemed to be a lot more. I think in Manchester, a lot of groups expanded, you know, went their own different ways. One thing that Tony Wilson told us um, is that you very rarely see any of these A&R men, the talent spotters around up in this area. But in fact, that Manchester's very much left alone to its own devices. No, I don't think they can afford the train fare up here, really. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever want to be signed by a major label? Yeah, when we started. I mean, uh, when you start in a band, it's everybody's uh, wild ambition to be the next Beatles or something like that. But um, the longer you keep at it, the less naive you become, and you realise that there's a bit more to it than that. I don't think I really bother me. I'm not really interested in record company, you know, the A and R man. Sniffing around your door, oh, we've read something about these chaps somewhere. Let's check them out. We changed a lot initially when we started playing. We couldn't really play, to be honest. <laughs> well, we've all got to learn. Haven't we? Yeah, it was very loose and just a bit of a fun thing, you know. Ah, oh, we're in a group, we're playing, you know, and. Uh, it was about August 1977, I think, when we really started getting our own particular way. You've been described as the, the next big breakout band out of uh, Manchester. And it's interesting that the other day we had uh, Gary Newman on Rock On, who was sort of pointing to the future of rock, and I've got a quote here from him where he said that machine rock was going to be the next big thing. Now, there's a certain influence, I can see, of maybe Velvet Underground or craft work or something in some of your music. Is that what you're consciously doing at the moment? No. No. Good. <laughs> Tell us what it is. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, all due respect to Gary Newman, but uh, I don't agree with uh, classifying anything, you know, shoving things in little boxes. What we do is what we do, and it's for people playing the sort of music they want to play. You're influenced to an extent by everything you hear. I mean, absolutely everything's got some sort of uh, influence on you. I mean, I listen to a lot of music, but I won't say that influences me. I mean, we all listen to different sorts of music, and uh, you can't really pin down any specific thing. I mean, like, uh, people keep saying, ah, oh, we like the doors. But, I mean, uh, Barney and Hockey haven't even heard the doors. <laughs> <laughs> so I can't really say, you know, you can say we've been influenced by them at all. With all the attention that you're beginning to get in the music press and these incredibly glowing reviews for your album, deserved glowing reviews too, how does it feel for you as a band to suddenly be the, the thing that everybody's looking at? To be honest, it doesn't affect us at all because when we started, we got very bad reviews. <laughs> and then we got a few good ones and a few bad ones. Not everyone in the whole country is not going to like us, so not going to bother us. <laughs> 